Okay, in this process of determining average fiber diameter on wool samples, we take a side sample, which is a sample that's taken from the midside of a, of a sheep, and from that we'll take a staple of wool, and from that we'll take a smaller substaple. The original one's probably about a half inch or inch in diameter. This one would be about a pencil size uh, substaple, and we actually run just a normal comb through it. And the reason that we're running the comb through it is to assure that the uh, fibers are in alignment and dispersed in a way that we cover the slide itself, the window in the slide. And so we open the slide up and we want to place the tip at the bottom end of the stage and the base of the, the staple at the top end. And as we close it, we put the, close the top end first until you hear it click. And then with, on this end, we pull the fiber slightly just to get some tension on them to where that they're not bulging out of the slide itself. The excess here, we trim off so that it doesn't interfere with our uh, slot or reading mechanism. And what you want is a density uh, that is somewhat opaque. You can see through it, but you can see the fibers if it's too dense, it will not read. If, there's, if it's too thin a fiber presentation, it will not read. So it, the critical part is, is in learning what density will allow the instrument to read it. Once you've got the sample prepared, you slide it into the slot where the reader, where the optics are, and just press Enter, and it'll take about 20 seconds or less for it to get a reading that calculates the average fiber diameter of this particular sample. And the reason we use a side sample in the original um, uh, sampling procedure is that is a representative, uh, it represents better the overall average of the fleece. And so the sample's red and then you can pull it out and run another one. This is the Fiberlux uh, instruments developed in South Africa, manufactured in South Africa, and um, uh, we'll probably cover it in the interview, but it's, it's uh, designed to be a uh, relatively inexpensive piece of equipment that is, you know, easily done, uh, accurate, uh, for growers to use uh, however they would like to use it, whether in selection program, culling program, uh, fleece separation for uh, packaging and marketing. So we're looking at it and, and uh, uh, comparing it to other instruments that we have available to see how well it compares. Uh, also just learning how to operate it and, and see how practical it is for growers to be able to, to use such an instrument. In a selection program, if, if uh, he, uh, he or she has a fiber diameter as far as that being importance, which it is one of the most uh, important value determining characteristics of wool. So fiber diameter, from that standpoint, a grower may want to select for a specific micron range in his flock or um, Bay, or call out the the, the uh, you know individuals that don't meet his standards, and also um, in fleece separation uh, for packaging for marketing. If you'd gone in and tested uh, your sheep, you could sort them prior to shearing based on fiber diameter. Well, it's a new company. That's why we're, we're looking at it also is from the standpoint of it's a new instrument, uh, hasn't been used very widely. As far as we know, we're the first ones here in the United States to have 
purchased one and got it in here and, and so that's why we've got it is to compare it and uh, but from the standpoint uh, there's the the company is manufacturing them and offering them for uh, sale in the commercial market uh, roughly two thousand dollars that would include uh, shipping and handling and so forth here in the U United States when you look at the two instruments that you'll be seeing here, the Fiberlux or the OFDA 2000, uh, ever since uh, we've been able to measure fiber diameter in wool through instrumentation, uh, we've always looked at um, easier, faster methods of doing it. Uh, normally in the past we would take a sample, we'd send a side sample to a commercial test lab, uh, they would um, run it through their normal uh, procedures. It was fairly labor intensive, fairly expensive, and not readily used by the wool producers. Uh, just the accessibility of, of doing all the, the proper uh, sampling procedures and getting that information back in a, in a real time way was impossible. So, and the other thing was, is we've never been able to accurately predict average fiber diameter from greasy wool, which in other words just the raw wool had to be processed to some degree, washed and, and cleaned before we could determine fiber diameter. These two instruments allow us to get around that where we can test greasy samples on an individual animal or on a fleece in what I would say real time, uh, uh, you know, period to where that decisions could be made on the fly if you would or immediately. So taking the same sample that Ronald just ran on the Fiberlux, I will be taking it and running it on the OFDA 2000, which is an industry uh, recognized method of measuring uh, fiber diameter um, that's already been tested rather rigorously over the years. And so I take that same sample and I, because typically for this machine you have a slightly smaller sample than what you would run on the Fiberlux we have determined. So I just take the same sample and just spread the fibers out a little bit more because this machine uh, again, it's the same way. It won't run it if there's too few fibers or there's too many fibers. In this case, we're much closer to having too many fibers. And so I want to make sure I have it spread across this entire slide. And so I turn the fan on to help hold the fibers down. And you want to get them as close to the top as possible. And again, having it spaced out more evenly is what will also help you. Uh, measure as many fibers. Then you'll hit spacebar for it to start testing. And then with this one, you'll enter a sample number. Um, so typically an ear tag number or some identification that you have for the particular sheet. Now it's right in the sample. With this machine also, it gives you a little bit more information than what the Fiberlux is going to give you. So here you'll have the micron diameter, which is the main uh, measurement that we're looking for uh, from this particular device. But in addition, uh, like I said, this, this um, the FDA 2000 will measure uh, different other things than, than the Fiberlux will. So in addition to the micron diameter, we also have the coefficient of variation. We have the length of the fiber. We have the comfort factor, which relates to the comfort of, of a, you know, an end garment. Um, the curvature of the fiber, which is going to vary based on, on breed, typically. And then you also have a, a profile graph that shows the variation of the micron within the, the sample that it, was te that it tested. Because obviously, just, just like your hair, it's not the same throughout the fiber, it does vary. Um, and so this actually does show you that variation.